when you watch sitcoms. The only thing you see is the smile and togetherness of the movie by each character, but a lot went into making everyone act normal and getting along on set. Because behind the scenes are always less rosy than we think. This is about the actors that were difficult to handle during or hated by their co-stars. 9. Carol O'Connor Carol O'Connor came from a progressive family. He was the eldest of three sons of his parents. His father was a lawyer and mother a teacher. Carol went to Wake University, then dropped out when the United States was in World War II. He applied to be in the Navy, but was rejected. He spent most of his youth days in Elmhurst and Wake Forest Hills, Queens, which is where his character and all family would later live. His acting career started in Montana University as an undergraduate. Although his major was not theater or drama, he acted in student theater productions. Carol has acted in over 10 studio movies in which he was either a police officer or military person in most of it. It was said that O'Connor was in Italy when he got the offer to be a cast member on All in the Family, which was previously Justice for All. Among all the cast for the show, Carol O'Connor was the highest paid actor. Still, he had problems and was complained about while filming the show. Carol O'Connor always has something to change and criticize. Sometimes the producers got tired and were contemplating on letting him go, but imagine how all in the family would have been without Archie. Exactly. So they decided to keep him. Then he came up with conditions the producers must fulfill for him to stay. I wonder what was going through the minds of the producers when he said this. Because firstly, you're highly paid than others. And now you have conditions? Carol O'Connor made his conditions known to them. The first one, he said he does not want to work before a live audience anymore or in front of tapes and three cameras, and if his offers were not granted, he would leave and the show would be nothing. Carol O'Connor told Daily Herald that he took up this role because he thought the audience would hate it, but he agreed to be in it because of the show's social significance. In his words, that's why I went into it in the first place, he added. I thought it would flop. I figured the press would love it, but the public would hate it. It turned out just the other way around. While being the highest paid actor on the show, all of his demands were met. As All in the Family switched from filming live and in front of a studio audience. So O'Connor retained his role. 8. Tina Louise The Gilligan's Island show was where Tina Louise played Ginger, a star who was stranded in the desert. Tina Louise was an epitome of Hollywood elegance and sophistication and which is why the ginger role suits her so well. But she wasn't the only sophisticated lady on this show. She was with another competitive lady, Dawn Wells, who played Mary Ann on the show. And it felt like she wasn't okay with that. Dawn Wells said she tried to be friends and cordial with Tina, but Tina wouldn't bulge. During the filming of the show, it was said that Tina was hard to work with either with producers or set mates. She had some highly placed expectations that no one understands. It was hard to have simple conversations with her and she never hangs out with the other members of the show. Sherrod spoke about the difficulties he had working with her while filming the show. He said, like one time Tina refused to work on a scene and she said she wouldn't. He went to meet her in the set dressing room and ask her what her reason was. And she went, the scene is ridiculous and I don't want to do it. And before they could finish that conversation, she asked if she could get her dressing room painted gray. I wonder how Sherrod handled that because what? After the show was done, the audience saw how Tina disassociated herself from the other cast members of the Gilligan Island show. She refuses to attend the reunion of the show or any hangout that has to do with the shows. There were rumors that Tina felt the show damaged her career as she just wasted three years of her life working on a set show that doesn't boost her acting career. She was even shocked when she saw on the media that her co-set mates saw her as an egoistic person and does not want to associate with others. 7. Frances Bavier Her on-screen personality was not the same with her off-screen personality, especially while she was on the set for Andy Griffith's show. There was a clash between her and Andy in terms of their personalities and also professional disagreements. She was one of the people that was hard to work with on set and would not want to compromise. She gets easily offended on set that everyone took extra caution while talking to her or if they need to ask her anything. It was said that when the cameras are not rolling, maybe they are taking a break from set. Things are always so difficult to handle between Francis Bavier and Andy Griffith. Andy likes to crack jokes and be free like a normal human, but Bavier hates those jokes and wants him to stop. 
She likes everything to be her way and very professional and meticulous. So there's resentment between both parties. Howard Morris, who was the director of the Andy Griffith show, said he had difficulty working with Bavier, that he felt as his, he was navigating a landmine. Bavier maintained zero relationship with the set made off screen. She allowed no one to her space and visited nobody. Andy said during an interview that three months before Bavier's death, she called him on the phone and apologized for her being hostile on the set for Andy Griffith's show, because they never agree on anything. Despite the complex relationships Bavier had on set, she was a great woman who knows and always embodies her role when it's time to work. 6. Suzanne Summers. This was a different case as her anger towards her castmate was because of a bad contract and her wanting more. Suzanne grew up with constant and daily fear of her father killing her, due his uncontrolled alcoholism habits he's also known to be a beater. She was the third out of four children. Suzanne was diagnosed with dyslexia when she was young, she made her bad with academics, however excelled in arts and crafts and drama. Suzanne played Christy Snow in three companies alongside John Ritter and Joyce Dwitt. They were co-stars in this show. Suzanne realized her counterparts were paid way higher than her, and she asked for a raise of the same amount as John Ritter, which was $150,000, while she was being paid $30,000. Instead, the producers fired her and made do the remaining part of the episode she was paid for while being guided with police and away from the other cast members. When Suzanne left the show, the show made it as if she needed to visit her sick mom in another country while they replaced her with Jennifer Harrison as a nurse that moved into the apartment, because if they did not do that, the show would lose the meaning of three company. This led to Suzanne disassociating herself from John Ritter and Joyce Dwight for 30 years, until 2012 where she reunited with Joyce on her show Summer's Breaking Through. 5. Maureen McCormick and Eve Plums These two were one of the cast on your favorite show, The Brady Bunch. They both played sister roles. And you know sibling rivalry is inevitable and a natural part of growing up. It was said that while filming the show, Jan and Marsha, Eve Plums, and Maureen McCormick never get along with each other. It's as if they took the siblings' fight seriously. There was even a rumor that Jan, Eve Plum, frequently felt envious of her perfect older sister, Marsha, Maureen McCormick. The third girl, which was Olsen, said this in an interview. I think it's kind of petty. Olsen stated, per people, From day one with these two, I have always been in the middle, and now it's at the point where there isn't even a desire to communicate through me. Same Olsen said this to Fox News too. I don't like there to be a rift in the family. I love them both and this means whenever we get together for any project there will only be one or the other. But I do understand Eve's point of view. She got tired of Maureen gaining attention for herself by regurgitating the tiresome and false insinuations that they had a lesbian affair. These two never want to see each other or have anything to do with one another. It was said that there's been many times for events where Eve would say, I'm not doing it if Maureen is doing it. In fact, they, the Brady Bunch producers, had scheduled a reunion and interview for all Brady Bunch casts, but had to cancel because of these two ladies. Some people blamed Eve Plump, while some blamed Maureen McCormick. But every beginning has an end. These two finally accepted to see each other in 2012 and end the long-ranging beef they had for each other. 4. Vivian Vance and William Frawley The chemistry you see on screen between Vivian Vance and William Frawley is totally different from what they have in real life. As it's said that both co-stars do not like each other at all. Vivian was 38 and William 60. This brought automatic disdain from Vivian to William as she felt uncomfortable acting his wife that he's meant to play the role of her father, not husband. Most times while filming on the show I Love Lucy, Jess Oppenheimer, who was the producer, was always called upon to fix arguments between these two. Vivian took it to another level by asking for some scripts to be changed while on set, and this never meets William in a good light. He would always say no until Jess Oppenheimer comes in, and he would, I'm doing this for you and not that batch. When the filming of the show ended, William Frawley said this to the media. She's one of the finest girls to come from Kansas, but I often wish she goes back there. I don't know where she is now, and she doesn't know where I am, and that's exactly the way I like it. Most people thought the problem came from Vivian, as she has been seen commending Simon, a cast member on the show for his acting in the role. She noted that his character was just not like Frawley was. 
She also talked about how William Frawley would drink day and night at the bar. He was a woman hater, known throughout Hollywood for very bad language and just antisocial behavior, she added. But some have the opinion that it's William that's being unbearable to Vivian, as he would ask where they found Vivian, and if they couldn't find a better actress to play the role. 3. Barra Barra Eden and Larry Hagman These two had one of the best chemistry while filming the shows. I dream of a Jeanine. And even years after, although there are some hitch. When Barra Barra Eden and Larry Hagman were introduced to the show, none of them had met before. Barbara was excited to see him, and she threw her hands round Larry but his reaction was something else. Larry Hagman was someone that grew up from a disciplined household, so he was rigid and a perfectionist. Barabara Barra Eden mentioned that when the cameras are off their face, Larry would request a long hour script rehearsal and even talk to the team script writer to change some things as they did not write or edit the script well. It was said that Larry Hagman was cocky as he would tell people he loved being the center of attraction in his words. I love being the center of attention. Why else be an actor? Some cast members on the show even said there's an insecurity behind all of Larry's stunts. Larry was known to have crazy mood swings on set. He even told Barabara Barra how he used to be addicted to smoking and drinking, but he quit, and how he's been using medications for five years. I had been addicted to tobacco and Bontril, a mild form of amphetamine. I stopped smoking, and I stopped speed at the same time. It got to the point that the producers wanted to replace him with another person. But Barabara Barra had to talk to the producer of how it wouldn't make sense if they changed Larry halfway through the show, so they retained him. Regardless of how cocky, cranky, and egoistic Larry has been on set, Barabara Barra was still fond of him and always wanting to spend time with him. 2. Will Smith and Janet Hubert Janet Hubert was tagged as difficult to work with, and other castmates were avoiding her on set while working on The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. And all this was because he had an issue with Will Smith, too. Janet Elizabeth Hubert started Taylor her acting and career Richard in 1981. The most she made her first about debut relationship that same in the history of a short musical movie. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton were both married when they met each other. Her issue Elizabeth started Taylor with Will was known to be a beautiful to talk on woman radio with pretty that she eyes. wanted the show to be it the Aunt that no man would say no to her Will Smith was not cool with that at all. While Richard Burton take about was how Janet Hubert has been talking about how she's been in the business for 10 years stars started and she can't allow Will to take the, the praise of the shine for the show and made dozens of films For now reason, Janet just has a disdain for Will and swore she would not be attending any reunion for the show as there will be was a product of kids Because in her words, I will never do anything with an asshole like Will Smith. He is she still an egomaniac and has acting. not grown up. Where they this provide constant reunion thing, thing will never ever happen actor. in my lifetime unless According there is Patrick an apology, Bryan, which Elizabeth he doesn't know the words for. And lovely. Producers and couldn't handle being a child actor her thing Janet and grew with her role and was replaced by Daphne Richard, Maxwell for he had the a next tough phase of the show. In a small Welsh village. Fans were not pleased he was the 13th with the development child that happened on the show. It would have been hard for Richard to become the reason why Janet left the show was because were low she was class difficult people to work worked with. on industry sites. In Janet's defense, but luckily for she Richard, said she was, he was pregnant, adopted by and her home wasn't good. Burton, so there was nothing Richard to make her smile or happy. Burton. And when her both of them started seeing each all other, that too. they were still married. But no one asked her. Elizabeth Claire Taylor was with singer on. Eddie Fisher. The little talks and Richard Will Burton was doing almost Burton ruined to Janet Hubert's acting career. Most you know what it means to be tagged on a difficult in the her acting sector Eddie than being a black woman. Food or flowers. One, but since the making Betty of Cleopatra White and B. Arthur, stopped going because Elizabeth Taylor and Richard B. Arthur Burton was were not openly fond flirting. of Betty White on set. And to Eddie, it's embarrassing. As other set mates attested to this. Elizabeth Taylor Golden sitting Girls on her was a sitcom of four Fisher, elderly women while embracing life Burton. together. Both Elizabeth on Taylor and Richard Burton got so popular that the these Vatican two had to write to them about his dismissal of their relationship that didn't set mates. As two of them are married and their relationship with each the other rumor has always been sinful. there about how their relationship One, was tense. John Malkovich It is said Michelle that the co-stars of Golden Girls these two had co-stars problems are just working like together on the beloved with their sitcoms, romance from the 1980s. But these are the most scandalous TV in screenwriter for the show. John Malkovich Stan is an American actor wrote in her who has book received Arthur, many awards for his acting. Away in 2009, he was the guy that had a lot of violence growing up to her. But he did not allow After that the filming to define of the show. Him. Betty Malkovich White revealed in an interview that B. Arthur didn't think much of her. From money she to was hair a pain in the and neck. his three siblings. Years after the show had Despite ended, all these, most of the other Golden and Girls cast members had passed Just away. Just like Michelle Pfeiffer, Betty she was White the mentioned that the issue four. started from after her college went for acting. Since she was consistently She's an award-winning actress hopeful, known for her which acting skills, which appeared to be at odds with B. John Arthur's Malkovich and Michelle Pfeiffer in 1988. While filming while the show was being liaisons, filmed, Betty White John enjoyed Malkovich engaging with a villain crowd, trying to seduce Michelle Pfeiffer to his pleasure. As a consequence. It seems this extends 
did not sit well with they were both seen going out together he felt the energy of making friends and these co-stars started an affair that led to the end of John Malkovich's marriage to Glenn Headley but it now came shocking to B. Arthur and Betty White Malkovich was the root of all evil she does not have been married since 1982 and it seemed to rub because of his indiscipline they had to split up in 1988 it's not John Malkovich for and Michelle Pfeiffer's relationship did not last for a long time, as these were brought was really short, and their career started in an interview. Totally different Malkovich line. seemed happy that Betty his relationship with Michelle TV Pfeiffer ended, career, as he, he felt he never liked her, on set, or she never liked him, Ather, and it was a miracle way. that they dated. But still, co-stars although he never talked about why the relationship came to an end, the Golden Girls the two stars moved on with their lives as Pfeiffer got married to Kelly. And then two children with the other way entirely. While Malkovich started so seeing someone new. So anytime you are watching a sitcom, Nicoletta Payton, just thinking he about had two the kids too. Producers put together to Finally, make the notion of co-stars falling in love while working on set. If you like this video, not do not forget to share and subscribe. And it has resulted also, in a diverse range of consequences. Also, let us know in the comments who gets your votes. For some, the these interactions have grown into joy and companionship beyond the screen.